Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to do a new problem as part of the GoMath 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. It's number 29 on the CBEST 2 Multi-Subject Math and Science Test. It's a great problem because it sort of goes into intermediate math concepts. So a really good one to study if you're preparing for the CSET or MTEL or a uh, upper elementary or middle school FTC or practice exam. Um, really good one to look at. So let's look at number 29. I'll read it over and then we'll talk about it. It says use the problem below to answer the question that follows. They give a scenario. For a bake sale, Marion has baked P chocolate chip cookies and Jeffrey has baked Q peanut butter cookies. They want to package their cookies separately so that each bag has the same number of cookies. How many cookies could they put in each bag? Read that to yourself. Then it says which of the following methods could be used to find all the solutions to this problem? And then we have options, A, B, C, and D. Find the divisors of P and Q. The, find the common factors of P and Q. Find the prime factors of P times Q. Or D, find the common multiples of P and Q. To help you with this problem, I'm going to give you the answer. That's right, the answer to 29 is B. Now I'm giving you this because I want you to think about how common factors for P and Q will help. Okay? Pause it, read it over, try and solve it, unpause it, let's talk about it. In this scenario, we're not told how many uh, chocolate chip cookies there are or how many, Q, uh, how many peanut butter cookies there are. Right? We're not told that at all. That's, the, that's, a really, that's a key piece of information that's missing. All we know is that there's, you know, um, P chocolate chip cookies and Q peanut butter cookies. So when it says they want to package their cookies separately so that each bag has the same number of cookies, it's saying the same number of P chocolate chip cookies and the same number of um, Q peanut butter cookies. So essentially it's saying that, you know, they want to keep the ratio, and this is how I'm interpreting the question. They want to keep the same ratio of peanut butter to chocolate cookies. Now we could write the ratio like this, P to Q, or we could think about the ratio as the same number of, for every P cookie, they're going to have the same number of um, chocolate chip cookies. Now if we're thinking about this in terms of a ratio of P to Q, and keeping those bags having the same number of cookies in each bag, then why don't we just take it a step further to make this uh, even uh, more concrete. Let's say P, let's give values for P and Q. Doesn't matter what you give it, you just have to be consistent. And I'm doing this, going to give values for P and Q to make it concrete. For example, let's say, uh, let's say we chose uh, 10 and 20. So what, what I'm saying is that we could have bags of potentially 10 chocolate chip and 20 peanut butter. That's one possibility. What's another possibility? Well, we could also have bags of, I don't know, five chocolate chip, 10 peanut butter. Or maybe we could have bags of, uh, of two chocolate chip, four peanut butter, or even really small bags of one chocolate chip, two peanut butter. Now each one of these bags has the same proportion or ratio of peanut butter to chocolate chip cookies. And what I'm doing is, uh, and what I did with the 10 and the 20, is I found out the common factors that they shared when I, when I broke them down. If we're thinking about just factors of 10 and 20, that would be like the factors of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5. And 20, it's 1 and 20, 2 and 10, four and five. Now factors are numbers that go into another number evenly without any remainder. The common factors that they both share is one, two, five, and ten. 
This means uh, that 10 and 20 can both be divided by 1 evenly with no remainder, 2, 5, and 10 evenly with no remainder. You know, 10 is divided by 2. 10 could be divided into two groups, two bags, um, each with uh, 5 uh, peanut butter or chocolate. And 20 could be divided into two bags, each with 10 uh, peanut butter. Maybe, maybe not. B is the answer. Okay. Now, we got a review of uh, how to solve the problem and, and what factors are and common factors are. Let's really quickly just address some of these other vocab words here, like divisors. Whenever we think of a, a division problem, like 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2, that could be written as uh, 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2, or 20 divided by 10, uh, divided by 10 is equal to 2. What we have here, what's doing the dividing is the divisor. And what's on top, what's being divided, we call the dividend. Now the answer, when you divide the dividend by the divisor, is the quotient. So we got a little review there. Oh, I don't think I spelled that right, but this one right here is the quotient. Okay, so we got a little review there of what a divisor is, a dividend, and a quotient is. What about prime factors? This problem really has nothing to do with prime factors, but just as a review, if I was looking at the number 20, and I wanted to know the prime factors in 20, I'd break it up like this. 20 is made up of uh, 2 times 10. 2 is prime because it only has two factors, one in itself. 10 can be broken up into 2 and 5. So if I'm thinking about the prime factors of 20, it's 2 times 2 times 5 gets you 20. Or we could write that as 2 to the second times 5 to the first. This problem doesn't have to do with that, so just use this as a review of prime factors and finding the prime factorization of a number. And uh, we'll continue on. And then our last, uh, our last idea here is uh, multiples. Multiples or like the multiples of 10 would be 10, 20, 30, 40. The multiples of 20 would be 20, 40, 60. Sometimes questions ask, what is the lowest or least common multiple between two separate numbers? What you do is you take the two numbers, list them out, and the first multiple or the lowest multiple that they share, that would be the lowest or least common multiple. And that's a, and listing it out like this and identifying the lowest common multiple, that's a strategy for lowest common multiple problems. Okay, team, I'm zipping through these ideas just so we can get a quick review of them. I hope you uh, kind of agree with me on B and see how that is, uh, how that matches up with this question. Okay? This is Chris Abraham, team. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Take care, team. Bye-bye.